Yeah. Hello, everybody, and sorry for the delay. The DHCP is crazy today. Okay. So, uh, I'm Amitosh. Uh, I'm a student at of student of computer science engineering at College of Engineering and Technology, Bhubaneswar, India, and I am gonna reflect something about what's the state of SE Linux in Fedora. Uh, I try to touch both the things that are happening in our workstation, server, as well as uh, the container stuff, and the new changes that are supposed to be done when the new modularity stuff is gonna land. So, so we'll start. So before that, uh, let's just have a little bit of overview about what exactly is our SE Linux. So, I hope most of you are familiar with this stuff. Like it's been from it's been for ages. Like uh, when SE Linux was actually introduced, I was a small toddler. So it's been from there. So, uh, so in short, it's a like mandatory access control layer that sits above our discretionary user group based traditional layer so that we can restrict it to even a further level than we could do it just simply restricting the ownership or the uh, users uh, like ACL attributes and we could uh, effectively tell that this particular kind of process is gonna read this particular kinds of files or or just exclude to access this particular device or something like that. So this thing is uh, very, very powerful and also sometimes dangerous because with great powers comes great responsibility. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a bit confusing for me. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, SE Linux basically works with uh, something called as a security context. So there's a context where you have the SE Linux identity, then a role, then a type, and a level. So these four parts of the context uh, work differently in different ways. Now the user and identity is more or less like similar to our traditional Unix users. And a role, role is something that we can employ when we are doing some role-based access controls using SE Linux. And using the type, this type is more frequently used in Fedora and most of it should be aware of this. Like we specify that this particular kind of process is not read this particular kind of files. So, and for levels, levels is mostly used when you are doing a multi-level security stuff. It's a bit advanced. I will not be covering MS MLS today. So uh, this is it. Yeah. So most of the time when we start discussing about SE Linux, some of them say that the best thing to do is go ahead and just disable it. I strongly disagree with this. Because if you are doing that, we are just kicking out this half of the security of the system. So instead of actually no, just go ahead and disable it. Try to fix it first. What's wrong? Like, are you doing something which you shouldn't be doing? So for that, we also have tools that will help us. Like we have audit allow, we have SE troubleshoot, or if it is something that's from your system repository, it's just please go ahead, file a bug, and our developers will look at it. So. Now here is what has happened in Fedora since SE Linux started with uh, Fedora Core 2. So it was disabled by default because as per the release notes, some problems with the core ex user experience breaking. And then in Fedora Core 3, there were like the implementation of targeted policies by starting with unconfined dash T and it was enabled on a very small subset of applications like SSHD. And then FC4 expanded it to 80 policies, and including Apache, Nginx, and all stuff. Then in FC5, there was a debut about multi-category security and multi-level security. Like it, that time, it was a bit complex. But in today, the scenario has improved. And MCS and MLS, as we'll see, will be implementing in 
our containerization systems so that to segregate different containers. So that thing was probably not used much back then, but now it is now it is being used. Then FC7 brought us the SC troubleshoot utility. So something is wrong, we get that uh, uh, GUI application and the list of things that is going on. And also we had other tools at that time. And then FC10 brought a subset of the SC Linux policies that we were implemented in Fedora. It's known as SC policy minimum. It just had the rules and a single target called unconfined dash T. And the upper subset that we come that is installed by default has all other 80 and 100 policies. So basically this was meant to be a starting point on which we could build our own policies for our custom applications. And now uh, somewhere around 15 and 16 uh, SE Linux policies were decoupled from a large gigantic RPM into smaller packages that were moving closer to code because uh, having the policies closer to code is better for us to debug what's wrong with this policy. Like it's better for the QA, it's better for the release engineering. So, and also we could also gather help from the upstream. So that was done and now SE Linux uh, like thing is having in Fedora is how is modularity gonna implement the implementation of SE Linux in our ecosystem. So, uh, yeah. So right now the state of SE Linux is we have almost covered all the core stuff uh, like uh, SSHD, like uh, sub application servers that uh, come with uh, Fedora by install. By, uh, by out of the box, as well as uh, services of systemd, they are all covered with SE Linux. Then uh, many of the applications that are available on the repositories have some policies confining it, have some policies guarding it against misuse, like our database servers, our web servers, they all have dedicated policies in the SE Linux packages. And then uh, what we should be doing is like, making the AC Linux cover almost we should be able to cover our flat packs we should be able to cover containers we should be able to cover user label and user facing uh, applications that you're having let's take Firefox for example we should be able to cover that also and it should also yeah it should also be easier for a normal software developer like who one of us are writing uh, code and going and publishing it on our own servers so that we could also easily secure it using SD next instead of writing a lot of complex tools that is what I think should be the future of SD next in Fedora now now in containers we already have a system of uh, safeguarding dockers using SE Linux. Now Docker by default has a SE Linux policy. This was inspired by Libvirt SE Linux policy and in this every Docker containers gets access to all files that are under slash user and slash etc. As well as any file that are leveled as Docker dash T or SVIT sandbox file dash T are also accessible. Now if I want to do some separation between my containers like one container or another container should not be able to interact in any other way I need to implement MCS multi category system now uh, this is currently opt-in in the package that's available in Fedora and the package that is available in RHEL and CentOS as well and this is used by the CoreOS team and the RKT uh, runtime they use and they separate the containers together so uh, this is something that I think we should also work on. Like we should bring MCS by default and make it opt out rather than having it opt in. And then uh, other containers, like as I just said, CoreOS and RKT, they employ a similar security model using MCS. And 
flatbacks they don't currently use se linux but it would be good if they used so that we could provide more security against applications breaking out of the sandbox that we create so that would be something uh, it may or may not be possible in all cases like uh, user facing applications that need to access files from the home directory but we should look at it like if some application doesn't really need anything to do with the home or any files we could just confine it on a linux domain keep it totally separate so so that's something that we can look at then 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 comes this modularity that's the new thing that's coming up now modularity makes promises of having multiple applications in the repo available now it has its own problems and own uh, own uh, own stuff that we need to handle now traditionally all our packages were all our sc linux policies were under a single policy we just in dnf install sc linux policy we get all the policies now what if we use a software that's having a radically different sc linux policy in the next person how are we supposed to manage it now from that we have been in this going in this direction and uh, pulling all the policies together as the code like uh, the code as well as the policies are staying at the same place but this hasn't been completely uh, going to eradicate the problem with modularity now if uh, if there is this this possibility of running two software together or running two software at two different times and we do not wish to have access of uh, something that uh, runs on version 1 as well as version 2 uh, that's a challenge how do we include some kind of name spacing in se linux policies now se linux is global by default now if i have nginx dash t like if it is common for all versions now one thing that we could probably do is have something like nginx dash 1.8 dash t and nginx dash 1.2 uh, nginx dash 2 dash t uh, but then this will also uh, lead to duplication of effort and sometimes it can be overwhelming for the administrators to actually manage this so uh, probably you would have something like a meta tool that just reads from the rpm spec generates a policy at the runtime then applies it uh, when our rpm is installed that could be one of the solution to this uh, or else we could even uh, write something that uh, completely uh, generates a policy at the runtime like we could have a separate meta language that generates a policy and have a oh. and it could have something like nginx common or nginx 1.2 something like an inheritance based model in which we will be just layering the changes over it so that's one uh, solution that we can have it here then uh, i also have some general suggestions to the developers and the se linux team uh, there are uh, there are other efforts in other communities like gentoo harden that is uh, one thing that i need to notify they have a lot of proof of concept regarding uh, confining user space applications like uh, one that why i was researching was about confining firefox like uh, like it had this challenges it had this issues but it is a great step forward if we move that way like we can uh, we can some way say that users like the firefox browser is not going to read my ssh private keys so i'm going to exclude it but if a user is actually wanting then we could just bring them and add it to and then uh we also need some more tools to help application developers confine them uh, so that we could reap the benefits of se linux when we were deploying our own custom in house applications uh the current uh, workflow for generating se linux is complicated we need to write three sort of files then compile it so that's not something that every one of us is willing to do every day so that's one more suggestion from me and there have been this concern in users like everyone just comes to me and and tells ki just disable it so 
why do we do that like they say that this is complicated which to some part i agree they say that this is this is buggy but which is not so we also need to do some kind of marketing so that sc linux is actually the benefits is actually going to reach the people who are developing software ah uh, <laughs> yeah we know so we need to fix that also so that's it like if we if the developers will complain that the policy is buggy they they just instead of telling that the policy is buggy they could just go ahead file a ticket yeah that is also that's also yeah some policies are buggy but that was like 10 years back like policies have changed like i have been using fedora since fedora 15 now i have seen policies that are buggy that were totally uh, restricting applications to start but now there is no such issue in that so policies are been fixed so that's was uh, so like if you are talking about policy drifting when our like distro maintenance writer policy and upstream isn't aware of it so uh, that's what i'm suggesting is bring the policy closer to the code like try to contribute the policy changes back to the upstream so that upstream also knows something has been written in some distro that can cause problems with you so yeah Okay, yeah. Something, whoa, it's way louder even when I'm talking normally. Uh, something that I've often seen is that a lot of the either SC Linux or, you know, this guy's armor policies, you know, the, the problem is um, the policies get written over and over and over again by different people. And at no point does anybody realize that, you know, maybe it should go to the May project. Like, even right now with the SC Linux policy in Fedora being decomposed into. um into the mod into the packages for the software nobody has actually considered just putting it in with the package that actually has the software there being separate packages and still being versioned independently and that keeps that makes it very difficult to do that kind of you know work you're suggesting also this is turning into action <laughs> yeah so that is also a major concern among this sc linux community like we are not contributing our changes back to the upstream that is something we should really start so uh, upstream should know that there is some policy somewhere yeah and also this could also uh, foster the collaboration between different distros like fedora we consider that it's a gold standard for sc linux and but if different distros are going to actually implement sc linux in them so Uh, they should also know what policies we are doing so if we contribute it to back it's something that we're giving back to a broader community even more people can go ahead and find bugs with the policy harden the policy like the more the people the more effort that we get and the more better result that we'll be going to get at the end of the day so these are the th three and plus one four main suggestions that we came out <laughs> so uh like yeah oh i'm sorry you were so i have one more question i don't know what's the status of this right now but a couple of years ago there was a problem with the uh, policy being monolithic and it basically can only be updated monolithically so there was an attempt to basically be able to split it up but it basically required updating the packages that would contain the sub policies at once and then rebuild the policy one time only but that didn't work out and we threw that uh, feature out of rpm again so i'm wondering what's the status there is our is as a linux fix so it can actually update the policy in reasonably time step by step or do you still have to put everything in one big package and update it uh, monolithically can you comment on that please so uh some of the packages have decoupled their policies from our main policy uh, rpm and put it like 
like like we have this docker se linux like there are other packages like uh, mysql se linux mariadb se linux there are packages like that so this has been done for uh, some of the packages but uh, like mostly many many of the rules are still in a monolithic rule like that still has not been completed now with the modularity i think it must be done so there is uh, there is no other way around it like we have to go and decouple the couples like the modules that you are having as linux any so uh, any other questions i uh, i have a question about gen2 hard and uh, do do you know if gen2 was able to con confine fire firefox after all the question is whether gen2 was about to harden firefox after all so confine. yeah confine okay so uh, they did a poc on that so that uh, they were able to confine the uh, syscalls that firefox was going to make uh, and the folders that the firefox uh, was able to read now this is something that uh, will work but the user needs to be told about that hey we are not allowing the firefox to go and read a directory from your home or your you are not allowing firefox to just write it at other locations like we have extensions and plugins like the experiment when they did uh, firefox was allowing our xp com plugins and which had basically unrestricted access to everything so in that time it broke a lot of such plugins but right now firefox itself is having some kind of confinement so if we attempt to do that confinement right now we will be able to amount of success than what they did so they were able to restrict uh, file uploads file downloads uh, invoc invocation of uh, arbitrary commands from uh, the plugins that are installed and also they were able to restrict what dlls or what uh, libraries were loaded by the plugins and also by the different extensions of firefox they were able to do this and after that experiment we also have many changes to linux policies in fedora like we are uh, having some confinement rules along the policies Uh, like many of the policies like some one most notable one that i will say is confining the flash plugin so that it didn't do much damage so that is something that has been done in fedora also i i i have three com comments on that so steve grub uh, wrote a blog on confining firefox i think a couple of years back yeah. and he basically concluded that you know it's it's really difficult to confine firefox because mo mo modern day bra browsers are like there are many operating systems they have uh, media plugins and they have uh, they they they, ha they have so many things like if you look at firefox code or if you look at chrome chrome chromium code it's it's really it really embeds so so many things that's one that's that's that that, that 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 is something which 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 makes it very difficult to confine firefox uh, the second problem over here is sl linux is more about uh, you know by default everything is closed So if you have a if you write an S Linux po policy around a dem and then by default everything is restricted. So you need to write a policy which will open up the restriction for each of the individual things, like processes or files or, or whatever. That's that that makes it very difficult to confine Firefox. I I think there is still some work going on over here, but it's uh, user space applications like Firefox and LibreOffice and stuff like that. It's going to it's going to be really difficult. Yeah, it's certainly going to be difficult, but. if it is difficult but it's still not impossible right so we need to improve both sl linux as well as firefox to reach there so what happened with the laptop uh it went to sleep you should probably like poke it <laughs> i mean told you uh so to the point about firefox not being able to be confined actually it's mm, easier now than it was before because plugins are gone. Yes. Uh as of the latest couple of Firefox releases, at least in the Fedora case, like if you're in old stable land, this is you're still signed up kind of screwed. But if you're using the latest Firefox releases, you don't really have plugins anymore. They don't work and XP uh XPcom extensions are gone. Um and the sandbox is actually fairly simple. It's a simple seccom filter and so you can overlay SE links pretty easily on top of it if you really wanted to. Um 
The main issue is, of course, that we can't keep up with Firefox's cadence. So if we really wanted to do it, we need to actually send the Mozilla policy we wrote a decade ago to Firefox upstream and have it maintained as part of that and actually assist them in plugging in with CI. And you know, from my own experience with SnapD, I wrote the SCLinux policy for SnapD very painfully, bit by bit, over like a year. And uh, that is actually integrated into the Snapcraft CI. And every time everything breaks, he has to fix it or I have to fix it. But, it's upstream, but Yeah, but it's upstream and part of the project and it's actually a gate. And that's the important factor. Now that people consider CI and CD part of the story, it actually makes it much easier to plug in things like SE Linux into that, into that model. And the thing is, the way I've seen the SE Linux team currently approaching the SE Linux decomposition, they're not thinking about it that way. And that actually worries me. Because even the Debian guys with AppArmor are actually not thinking about it that way either. And that scares me, because nobody is thinking about it that way. And that makes the drift all the more painful. Are there any AC Linux developers out here? Like those are totally associated with Fedora Core. AC Linux. Yeah, that's an issue. Yeah. Yeah, they are neither at flock also. So we need to somehow like convey this message to them. That's is important. Yeah. Maybe as an observation from across the pond. So with Apparmer, we've been having the same story. We start with just like, let's write some policy for some important software. We start with Firefox and a bunch of other stuff. And we got some progress. And then we wanted to have more and more apps. And we essentially had the same approach, a, a single monolithic package shipping all the policies that just didn't work much because it kept drifting. Um, we started raking it up. But most projects don't really take the packages. Like If we actually go and submit the patches, they don't understand this. They, it's not like they don't want to, uh, but for them it's, well, I'm not running on something that actually can use this LSM, so I cannot really test this. I don't really understand how this works, so I'm not willing to take the patch. So the problem is not only just upstreaming, but actually teaching upstreams about how the LSM actually works, how do you actually develop with it, and it's not easy. Why? OK. <laughs> so this, <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> I hope it's not. So we, we didn't have big success here. Uh, on the other hand, one thing that did work very well, um, click packages, the precursor for snaps, were also confined with AppArmor. And the policy was written by a security expert who looked at every specific package. It didn't scale, obviously. We stopped doing that. And instead, in snaps, we don't have that. There's one policy for every application. And we have snippets that you know do well-defined things. So an app developer who wants to write a RSS reader doesn't need to understand you know, all of LSMs. They just need to say, I would like to have access to the network and to the display system, so I have a desktop application. And that's much easier language, and we found much better traction. Because then they actually say, OK, I'm willing to take this, that I want to have network, and I want to talk to the display system, but I'm not willing to take the whole big complex thing that it really compiles into. So just maybe having an intermediate language that is much easier to work with you know, could be a, uh, like a starting point for so, so upstreaming. I mean, modularity could be. Um, so, to kind of riff off of Zygmunt's point here, um, one of the things that actually, like, I'm not an SE Linux team person or whatever, but like, I watch all that stuff very closely. One of the things that actually happened two years ago was that SE Linux gained the ability for you to write another language to describe how policy works. And so one of the things that could happen is that somebody, uh, like the major policies, the LSMs, both AppArmor and SE Linux, could actually decide what a common high-level description of what that stuff should be so that upstreams could actually maintain descriptions of what those do and translate into the similar mechanism that you know snaps do with the well-defined snippets and whatnot. Because the, I, the concepts of what they, what they restrict or allow is relatively easy to map conceptually. The difficulty is actually making it so that they actually are implemented. So, yeah. uh, regarding this point, I can think of an example. Like, we also have SC Linux in Android. Now, the SC Linux policies for a particular app is like the restriction of the application in Android is both 
like the JDK security manager, as well as whatever rules we supply in the manifest is translated in some form into SLE Linux rules. So that is one example that I can think of regarding to this. Like if we could have an XML or a some other DSL and no, right, make the <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I'm not in for of XML. <laughs> I'm not in for of XML. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if we have something like that says, ki, just give me access to this, 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 this network and that, like a very simple subset of what AppAmmo can do, what SE Linux can do, and write a tool that's going to generate a second point out there. Like that's going to generate a SE Linux policy, or maybe at some point we could also ask is to generate an AppAmmo policy. Put it there so that the upstreams will be happy, we'll be happy, everyone will be happy. Yeah. Um, I think when we put the policy generation into the package environment, we may run into the issue that either a package maintainer is like, hmm, okay, I usually I would maybe uh, just have this package in place, so I will just say, oh, come on, give me everything and it's fine, because it makes my app work. So um, what I like about the mono monolithic approach is that we have another team or another set of people who watch what the application does and says, oh, this is fine, this is not fine. And this makes it, of course, also more secure because you ha just have a, a second point of view for that applications that are um, watched by SE Linux and, and confined. So even when now a malicious um, a packager or a, a, a malicious package is provided, it still isn't able to, or the application which contains this malicious uh, parts is, is still not able to read various files, etc. Of course, for the desktop, it's currently, well, not really existent because we just run everything unconfined. But the basic point is that, um, especially when it comes to security features, you want to have a second pair of eyes that is looking at all the policies and just double checks it. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. So uh, in s when we are talking about decoupling the policies from a monolithic package, we are not discarding the entire SE Linux team. Like they will be still be there, and they will be still reviewing all the individual uh, dash SE Linux packages. So they will still continue to have a look on what the application developer is sending them. So we will not change the way we are packaging in Fedora. Like we will still package the SE Linux policies separately, and it should be getting reviewed by the SE Linux team. So that how it should continue. That's my opinion. Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Um, the well, the idea of a monolithic policy is interesting, and one of the reasons why basically every LSM under the sun has done it that way in the beginning. The problem is one human does not scale, like just period. They don't, uh, and every, and the thing is, the SE Linux team at one point has been as large as like seven people but they all run away and go join different other circuses. Like Dan Walsh is now in the container circus. You know, one of the other ones just quite, uh, frankly, just left Linux forever because, you know, apparently security is very hard. And the other thing is that, generally speaking, the concepts that are actually, expo that are described by both AppArmor and SE Linux are too raw for anyone to really understand the, co uh, the, the consequences. Yeah, the consequences of them, they're, they're very raw. Uh, to the point that most people are like, we're just going to say, screw this. And this is actually the reason why we have, A, a minimal policy, and B, the targeted policy. Because we actually started out with C, the one that covers everything and breaks everything. And we went backwards because it turned out to be a horrible idea. Um, today, if you actually launch new services on RHEL 7, for example, they are unconfined otherwise. In Fedora, we flip the switch. Now everything breaks if it doesn't have a policy. Um, that's a big change, and that, that actually is a problem act change because there's actually no good, easy, or useful remedy for that problem. 
uh, because the amount of expertise out there and the documentation for how to actually do these things is so bad. Like, I'm not, it, it's not just SE Linux, it's all the S LSMs. It is so bad that it is really, really hard to figure out what you're supposed to do. And so this is one of the, re one of the reasons that I'm even involved in Snaps at all is because I actually like the way that they do the descriptions for, for security. And it's a concept I think actually doesn't necessarily need to be in Snaps alone. It could be something that you could pull into the general world of like how security is managed in Linux. But the fact that it hasn't happened in almost, what, 20 years is shocking. Like it's almost 20, 2000 was when SC Linux was introduced to the world. The first LSM, and in 20 years, almost 20 years, it's 18 years now, nobody has ever thought about doing that. It took Google doing it with Android for somebody to think that it was a good idea. So just uh, just recall one thing that's I think useful. So the high level language that we have in Snaps for describing like the shape of the sandbox for applications is not really strictly about AppArmor. AppArmor is one of like five or six things that actually gets you know yeah. done. So when you say I want to access network, it has implications on system calls through a seccom filter. It has implications on the app armor itself, which confines networking. But if you look at some other interfaces, which is the extensions of the sandbox, they, they do device C groups, they do all kinds of things. And this is so nice because we found them to be very complementary. Like some things work very well in one place, like we can do this with a device C group. Other things work very well with S with SC Linux, sorry, with app armor. And the other things work very well with second filtering. And just one of these alone is not sufficient usually to do what we want as a concept, like I want to do this as an application. So um, I don't think we like anyone ever realized this before and said it aloud. This is a very useful property. We can we can plug additional things that help <laughs> help to convey the you know the semantics of the confinement, like access to the network. What does it really mean, right? What does it really mean? Like what kind of limitation we're going to put in place? Maybe there's going to be a network namespace around the process, but just the things that are one concept can map to multiple. Technologies, that's very valuable. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Although, I mean, one of my primary frustrations with Snap is that uh, that all not all of those plugins are fully formed, and the the result is that you get the same kind of um, it, yeah, you get the same thing with a cl you get the same problem as you have with SE Linux is that you just turn it off by writing a classic snap, right? And <coughs> and uh and so so even even still, even with a with a more abstracted model, right, I'm still running into some similar problems with the with the applications or loopholes or issues that are that are there with Let, let, no, I want to say something first, and then you can go. So Zygmunt, I'm going to just say this on the record with speakers and recording to say, this is why I suggested two years ago you should just make Snap confine a separate thing instead of just folding it, because it could have been generally useful across the board for this kind of stuff. And now you can say something. So uh, I agree with what you say. Like every technology that's just like not super mature and super polished is going to have rough edges. So people use things like classic confine, which means really unconfined things. As a as a workaround, they can also use um, non-enforcing confinement, which is a lot more convenient for them in practice because it means things run, um, and they see why it used to not run. Like there's a message saying, "I'm allowing this," but you know, otherwise I wouldn't. So there's some kind of feedback we can get. But the primary point I want to like um, throw across initially, the the surface of things that are broken is far smaller. There's like a hundred or so interfaces, and there's thousands of snaps. So fixing one interface fixes it for every application out there without these guys knowing, without these guys having to care. Without, I mean, it's just a central point for the semantics that has to be fixed. That's much easier to work with. We also have something like SC Linux in permissive mode that exactly does this. Of course, while debugging the policies, that's a, that's a friend. Yeah. So, any other comments, questions? Questions? Comments? So, anyone?
Okay then. Uh, so, yeah. So I so this is all from me right now. So thank you.